Okay, so it's the morning after Christmas. So before I get any more comments added on to the Wyckoff video, I wanted to get our winner picked. Um, I've been thinking since I put the video up how the hell I was going to do this. Because I was thinking I was going to have to like get everybody's name written down and put them all into a, into a spreadsheet on Excel so that I could number all of them. And then just do a random number generator to pick a number and then yada, 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 yada. Well, I got to thinking it's like surely somebody has already made an app for this crap. So I went on the internet and just searched YouTube comment picker. And sure as shit, comment picker. So that made life easier. I've been playing. I, I played with it a little bit and it seemed, seemed to work pretty good. So... Um, all you gotta do is, yeah, put your URL in for the video you want, and I already did that. And then you filter out duplicates. Um, I do not want to include replies to comments that have been made. I just want the base comments. And all that other stuff doesn't really matter. So, you go get comments. And it'll count everything up off that video. There are currently 415 listed comments on that video, but a bunch of them have been replied to by other people. So it found 387 base comments, which is about right. And then you go just pick a winner. So, it looks like Kevin Coors is our winner. So, um, I guess, Kevin, leave a comment down below. Um, we'll get you some contact information. We can get together. I can get your address, and we can get this stuff sent off to you. So, And if Kevin does not come forward or decide he doesn't want this, um, then in another video, I will do this again and pick a different person. But um, he is gonna be where we start so Kevin this is your call leave a comment down below and with that being said um, we will finish up this video New Year's Eve but I wanted to get this part done out of the way before too many more comments got added on that video so because anybody after Christmas Day doesn't count so we will catch you guys Next Friday, I think. Is this New Year's Eve? Is it next Friday? Yep, next Friday. Okay, so I said that when I did the drawing video, I would try to answer some of the questions that were being brought up in that Wyckoff video. And um, the vast majority of what I was seeing um, revolved around the harvest side of things. So I'll try to I'll start at harvest. Um, I'm not gonna do the act. I'm not gonna talk much about the actual like um, field side of things as far as um, how it's taken care of the management stuff because that could be an entire video on its own. Seed corn is so intensively managed in the field it's not even funny. Um, but I'll start at harvest and kind of work back into the plant so um for the most part and this isn't um this isn't for every seed corn company it sounds like from what they described to me why cough actually lets the corn come down in the field mostly naturally but they don't they don't have a um as many acres to cover as the big seed corn companies do so like where I work, they'll actually go in in late September. Um, actually, no earlier than that. They'll usually go in like late August, early September and um, spray uh, what they call a desiccant, which is pretty much just a salt water brine. Um, and it will uh, artificially kill the plant and start dry down. Um, and 
they do that for two reasons. First, they you can control seed size that way. It usually leads to a smaller kernel. And um, B, it when you're covering the acres that we cover where I work, um, if you let it all come down in the field naturally, you wouldn't be done harvesting corn until December. So it's to speed up the harvest process and do some quality con initial quality control in the field. Um, and then they usually try to get it down to between 30 and 35% moisture for seed corn harvest. Um, and then they come in with pickers, which this day and age, seed corn picking is ruled by oxbow ear pickers. Um, back in the day, they used pull type pickers and tractor mounted pickers. And then when unis came out, they started using uni harvesters with uh, snappers or snapping units. Um, and then Pixels and Byron's and now Oxbow pretty much rules the market. Um, it is not husked, it's just snapped off the stock and the stock is shredded and it goes into a dump cart. Um, some harvesters um, have a integrated hopper on them so that they're their own dump cart and a lot of harvesters. Um, those are usually used for by smaller outfits and then when you get into bigger fields or larger outfits they'll have um, bigger harvesters with a elevator off the back and they will either pull a separate dump cart which they usually do when they're opening up the field so that they don't run down any corn um, and then the uh, elevator will usually swing to either side of the machine and then they'll pull a dump cart alongside with a tractor and then from there uh, the dump carts will dump it into uh, semi trailers. Um, it's for the most part hauled in uh, live bottom belt trailers or walking floors. Um, I'm sure some places still use dump trailers. Uh, they don't let us use them at work anymore because of an accident that happened long before I started. So now I can't use dump trailers where I work. We have to use all belt trailers or walking floors. Um, so. It's once it's in the truck, truck brings it into what's called the green corn receiving building. Um, there it is dumped onto a Viber trough because um, when a you get a truckload of wet, not husked corn ears, they want to fall out of the back of the truck in blocks. So it'll usually come, you know you'll get a wall of corn that comes out of the truck that far and then it'll just shear off in this big pile because of the way everything packs together in the truck going down the road. Um, so it dumps onto this big, big long Viber trough and that Viber trough kind of uh, smooths the pile down and evens out the corn flow. And then it gets dumped onto a belt which takes it into your green corn receiving building. And then once it's in the building, it goes on to husking beds. Um, those beds take the husks off because um, the vast majority of when the corn can be damaged is during harvest and transport, at least during the wet stage. So once it's in the green corn building, they husk it. Um, most places have what they call sorting tables, which is a belt, a little short belt that once the corn comes off the huskers, you'll have a crew of people there and they'll be picking out ears that um, come off of rogue stocks, which are hybrid stocks that, that um, accidentally, like if you got a little bit of cross pollination from another field or something, you'll, if you look across the seed corn field, you usually see you, when it's even and you'll see stocks that are like towering above the rest of the field. Those are called rogues and it's generally either cross pollination happened or you had a, a kernel got mixed in. Something happened to cause that, uh, to cause a hybridized stock to end up in that field. So um, those usually produce a full size, fully pollinated ear, so they're really easy to pick out. Um, they'll pick out ears that have a lot of discoloration, poor kernels, stuff like that. Um, because a seed corn ear is generally very small and it's not 100% pollinated. It'll have aborted kernels in it. So um, seed corn ears do not look anything like a field or a ear off of a commercial corn stock. So once it's sorted, it goes into a dryer building. Um, a ear corn dryer is nothing like, 
I shouldn't say nothing like it's it's got it shares some similar components but for the most part in your corn dryer is nothing like what you would think of a shelled corn dryer um, basically it's just a great big square hopper with a sloped uh, floor that comes in at about a 45 or comes down at about a 45 degree angle and it's got normal chisel punch perforation like a dryer like an air floor in a regular grain bin and it has um, air that it, it, it blows hot air either down from the top or up from the bottom um, depending on how the corn is drying you can um, reverse the airflow to uh, push out wet spots because your corn does not dry as evenly as um, shelled corn and you usually have because of quality control that usually dry it at what would be considered for grain drying a very low temperature usually between 90 and 100 degrees um, so it usually takes at work with our dryers if it comes in at between let's just say 30 percent say if it comes in at 30 percent we say it usually takes about 24 hours to dry a bin that is considering good outside air temperature low humidity all that if, it, if you get a night when it rains or if the uh, temperature uh, comes up if the outside temperature comes up because you have more efficient drying if the outside air is cooler um so if you get a high ambient air temperature or a high um humidity or a rain or something like that it greatly increases your drying time because basically you're just pumping humidity right back into the corn so you can take that 24 hour bin and turn it into 30 36 hours so um once the corn is husked and in the dryer and is dried um you pull it out and basically there's just you there's uh big doors at the bottom you crack open and there's a conveyor belt runs along the bottom of the dryer and you empty the bin out and it goes right into a sheller um the shellers we use at work are built by a company called aec they're new western models um they are shit. you spend more time wrenching on them than you do using them um but they are basically like a 1950s corn sheller they're the exact same technology it's just a rotor in a cage that's they there's really only one way to build a corn sheller um the difference being uh shellers that they use for seed corn have a shaker shoe underneath them like a shoe on a combine and it's got uh hole screens in it like what we showed you down there that they have in their delta cleaner um and that is where your initial seed sizing takes place um when it comes to corn screen sizing is everything um and your screens are set in 64th of an inch so um what we run is tw what we call 25 screens on top which is 25 64 of an inch round holes and on the bottom we run 17 screens or 17 64 of an inch so anything smaller then 25 64 of an inch falls through your top set of screens and anything that stays on top runs off and goes to cull which um, in seed corn industry cull is your trash corn it doesn't mean that there's anything physically wrong with the kernels they're just too big to bag basically um, or the or they'd be too heavy or something like that so all your large seed falls off the tops of the screens and goes to cull anything that falls through the screens runs back to the to the back end of your sheller because your top your top screen slant forward and then um your back your bottom screens slant backwards so it comes off the top screens falls to the front of the sheller and then goes back toward the back on top of your 17 screens and anything that falls through the 17 screens is considered too small so that goes to call and anything that stays on top of the 17 screens goes through the back of the sheller into your good corn chute and then that goes into your bulk bin um smaller seed corn companies like uh wyckoff uh, remington a lot of places like that will just store their corn in regular grain bins um 
I know a Remington plant next to us, they actually shell into gravity wagons and then take the gravity wagons and dump the corn into a bin and then they'll pull back out with gravity wagons, um, kind of similar to the way Wyckoff did it. Um, we shell right into a bulk store. Our shellers are on the front of our bulk storage, what we call our bulk storage building. It's basically just a giant if you took the sheet metal off the side, it would almost remind you of a giant old time concrete elevator. It's just made out of steel. Um, just a bunch of interlocked bins that run the length of the building and we dump in the top of them. Um, and then that's where it'll stay until it's time for um, time, time to run through the conditioning tower. Um, so once your corn is in bulk storage, your initial sizing has taken place. Um, it has been, your initial cleaning has taken place. The shellers we have, unlike old shellers, don't have cleaning fans or anything like them. So you'll still get chunks of cob or what we call witch's fingers, which are the little pieces that connect the cob to the stalk. Those usually, because you're harvesting so green, those usually break off and go with the ear. Um, and you'll get bees wings and stuff like that in with the corn. So that's where the Delta cleaners come in. Um, when you get an order for a run, um, you pull it out of bulk storage and they're just big, they're big cone, they're big cone bins. So you dump in the top, pull out the bottom. And there's a conveyor that runs the entire length of bulk storage under a row of bins and all of them funnel out of that one conveyor. Um, you pull it out, you run it in, there are uh, surge bins over your delta cleaner so you get those surge bins full enough to start running and then you set up your delta cleaners um, your delta cleaners I don't know how, how Wyckoff does it exactly I know that where we work the screens the shoe in our delta cleaners is basically a mirror image of the shoe underneath our shellers the difference being the delta cleaners have a cleaning fan in them and uh, they have a cleaning fan and they have at the top they have uh, dust suction which goes into our yellow dust system because once it's in the tower dust collection is a big thing you don't want dust all over the place because corn dust is explosive and one spark can turn a perfectly good day into a really really bad day so when it goes into the Delta cleaners we run the same 2517 screens that is scalped again Again, anything that stays on top of the 25s goes to cull. Anything that stays or that falls through the 17s goes to cull. You have cleaning fans this time that pressurize the underside of the Delta cleaner and force all of your uh, cob chunks and witch's fingers and bees wings and everything like that to float. And they are either blown out of the side of the machine through the uh, discard system or the dust system will get a hold of it and pull it off the top. Um, usually during your suction and blowing as well, you'll get some of the lighter um, corn out that has low test weight. So you usually get some more cu more cull corn in with your trash. Um, and then one of the other questions I got a lot of was what happens to all the corn that gets thrown away. Most of our corn is hauled right to an elevator down there. Um, and sometimes we have a contract with an Amish outfit down there that grinds a bunch of feed. So some of it either goes, depending on how clean it is, some of it either goes to an elevator or if it's heavy on cobs, it'll go get ground straight for cattle feed. So that's what happens to the, to the bad corn. So then, once it goes through the deltas and gets cleaned up, um, what we have, one thing we have that uh, Wyckoff did not have was what's called a color sorter. Um, ours are made by a co Japanese company called Sataki, and basically it has red, green, and blue LED lights that, for the most part, cover your full yellow, yellow spectrum. Yellow and white spectrum is basically what we're looking for. Um, and it's got two sets that shine from the front and from the back and the corn falls down this track 
right in between those two sets of LEDs and there's cameras pointing from front and from back and there is air ejectors pointing from front and from back. And basically what those color sorters do is exactly what the name says. It looks for off-color kernels, either black kernels or discolored spots on the kernels or chunk more chunks of cob because the delta, delta cleaners do a good job but they can't get it all. So basically anything that's not a yellow kernel or we do run white corn where I work too for uh, tortilla companies. So you could go in there and play with your settings and if you have let's say you got a bunch of kernels coming through with a brown spot on them that you're not getting you can change some of your settings and look exactly for that brown spot and you can you can fine tune it to pick out corn that you want to pick out um, you could actually reverse it and it would kick out all the good corn and keep all the bad if you wanted to um, so the color sorter do another cleaning they kick out all the dark all the bad kernels all the disease kernels any more trash they can find whatever once it goes through the color sorters, then it goes into your sizers, um, your initial sizers. What we use are 19 slots. Um, I think Jacob said that they use 20 slots down there, so their corn actually winds up a little bigger. Um, and your slot screens separate your large seed from your small seed. Once it's broke out from your 19 slots, it'll go to, um, they run 13 slots, we run 13 slots. And your 13 slots will separate out your rounds from your flats. So flats will go through the, through the slots and rounds will stay inside the slots. And um, that, then they get separated out and then the rounds go to their own bin and the flats go to their own bin. And that's the end of the line for the, um, as far as sizing for the rounds, or for the large rounds, your large flats. The small rounds and the small flats go through one more set of, set of screens. They're um, either 16 or 17 rounds, depending on what the order calls for. And basically that picks out the rest of your small seed that's too small to bag. Um, so the flats go through their own set of 16 rounds and the rounds go through their own set of 16 rounds and just separate out the rest of the small kernels and then they're separated into their own bins. And then from there you go across the gravity tables for one final cleaning and then they go into their yellow bins. And the yellow bins are what the treaters pull out of to put on your seed treatment. Um, I'm sure a lot of you saw the dipshit on that. Actually it was the one after the Wyckoff video. What one was that? I think it was my year-end video. Was it my year-end video I put up right after the Wyckoff video? I'm pretty... It's whatever the video was right after the Wyckoff one. I'm sure, I'm, I know a bunch of you guys saw that idiot that said that they were applying Roundup as a seed coating. They don't apply Roundup as a seed coating. Um, most seed coatings have a fungicide, a insecticide. Um, some of them have a nemicide, although um, Nema strike was the big one and that got outlawed because people were getting breaking out in rashes. Um, but it really depends on what the order calls for and what that um, option package for that hybrid calls for as to what seed treatments it gets. And then we either get a green colorant, a red colorant, or a purple colorant depending on the seed trait. Um, so red red corn at least on our site um the colors the color coding changes from from seed company to seed company but as far as decal goes red corn is roundup uh roundup ready purple corn is conventional and um green corn is traded so that's your smart stacks or your double pro so um and then after, after it gets treated, it goes into your treated bins, which are separate from your yellow bins. And then from there, that's where your packaging lines pull out of and they get put into bags or boxes or whatever after that. So that's basically the uh, story of how that works. Um, I was thinking about asking them and this is all going to depend on timing because they do their seed, they start their seed corn harvest in October, it sounds like. Um, 
but I was thinking about asking and we'll see if everything works out with my schedule and their schedule and the way harvest goes next year and with everything else going on in the world, I was thinking about asking them if I could come down and get some video of them picking ear, or picking seed corn and kind of their, their harvest down there um, for you guys. So no promises on that. It was just a thought I had. I was going to run it past them, see what they thought about it, go from there. But um, anyway, with all that out of the way, I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to end up with more questions out of it. But um Without being able to take you there and say, here, this is what we do. That's the best That's the best overall I can give you. Um, and like I say, as far as the field management side during the growing season, that could be in its entirely own video. So, um, yeah, I hope that answered that. I hope that answers most of the questions I was getting. Um, and then I was also getting a bunch of questions about their seed availability and where they ship to. And like I've said before, if you want any information about where they'll ship seed to or hybrid availability for your area or hybrid suitability for your area, you got to contact Wyckoff directly. That's, that's their thing. So get on their website, contact them if you're interested in seed. Um, any questions related to that, go to them. Not, I'm not the guy for that. So um, with all that, uh, Kevin, get me some information for you and we'll uh, get your prize headed your way. Um, and I guess if he either turns it down or does not respond, we'll do another drawing and somebody else will get a shot at it. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I got to start shuffling some equipment around and get some stuff put away and get ready to start working on a three speed out of the T. So that's going to be its own separate video, obviously. So I guess with that, that's it for this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one.